<laughs> Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to my live session. Welcome to my live. Today is a cold day here. So that's why we look like that. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to Jace Kainas Canada channel. When you join, make sure you subscribe before you forget. Like for more Canada. And that's my lemon, guys, just to keep me warm. I thought I should come live just to catch up to know how you're doing. And I hope you're all doing well. Hey, what's the time now? It's seven here. It's going seven minutes to, it's actually nine minutes to, it's 10 minutes to 7 p.m. So I'm expecting a lot of people in Africa to be asleep. But a lot of you guys who are in diaspora, Canada, welcome. Let me know where you're watching me from. And if you're in Africa, tell me why you are not sleeping at this time. Let me know why you are not asleep. <laughs> yeah, we are live. Today I look different. Today I decided to be real me. Feel me, because today the whole day I was in the house, just warm, on my couch. And I said, ah, how can the whole day end like that without me going live? But don't worry, we are okay. As long as you can see me, it's good. It's good to go. Why are you not sleeping? We are searching. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Finland. How is Finland? Tell us more about Finland. I know there are some goodies for Finland lately. Lately, there are some goodies for Finland. Lately, lately. I'll, I'll give you feedback, guys. Once, once, I, once I clear the air, I'll come back. But Douglas Kipruto, tell us if you have some good news. Etobicoke. How is Etobicoke? Yeah, Tobiko, I know it's warm there today. Even here, it's it's not so cold, but I, I was just indoor. We are not sleeping, thinking of Canada. Wow. Reading, what are you reading for? You are reading and you're on, on YouTube. You are reading for NCLEX. Huh? Night shift. <laughs> night shift. Nancy, oh my goodness, nurses and night shift, oh my goodness. If there's something I hate, is night shift. Gosh, me when I go for night shift, my 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 clock just messes my life. Don't like night shift. Even though night shift here is very good, nurses, when you come to diaspora, make sure you take night shifts because at night you don't come across those crazy crazy in charges. What department and managers? At night, you're just yourself and your patients. Nobody is following you up. But during the day, especially if you're not very good with your nursing career, don't work during the day initially. Because initially, you know, if the system is new to you, you can easily lose your license during the day. Because everybody, everybody's eyes, they are on you. But at night... At night is good. You can make your mistakes at night and correct them by yourself. You are on your own. You are just given your own patients. 10 patients, 12 patients. And nobody is supervising you. Maybe you only have one assistant. Yeah, but you are the, you are the boss. You are your own boss. That's why I like the nights. But eh, me, no. Nairobi, Kenya, wishful thinking. Iraq, how is Iraq? Watching from Ontario. Which part of Ontario? Oh, language challenges in Finland. Hey, me, I don't think I'm ready to, to learn a new language. <laughs> Even the ones that I already have, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> but you know, if, if that is what you have, eh? if it's that, that's what is available, please 
Pambana na hali yako. Fight until you get there. Okay. Watching from Alberta. Hey, today is Canadians. How is Canada? How is Alberta? Sharon. <laughs> Tell us how I'll, have you achieved your dream? Are you excited that now you are in Canada? Hmm? All Canada has added you more stress to, to what you had. France. How is France? Hmm? <laughs> Honest. Seriously, this is my son. You're calling me Joyce. You're watching me live. <laughs> Guys, subscribe to this son of mine, Honest Canadian Tourist. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. The whole of last month, he only got one subscriber. <laughs> so make sure you give him another one. Right. So now, our topic today is how do we convert our visitor's visa to work permit? That's our headline. How do we convert? Who knows? Somebody tell us. And or I share the link with you and then you come and tell us. If you're in Canada and you manage to change your visitor visa to work permit, whichever pathway you used, come and tell us before I tell them. <laughs> you know, it's good to hear from the horse's mouth. And tell us whether it's easy. It's also good to tell them whether it's very easy. Hmm? You are in school with a lot of pressure and stress, <laughs> Alberta. Yeah, nothing comes easy. At least when you come live, you watch Joyce Kainas Canada, you feel nice that you have another Kenyan with you here. Immigration is never easy, my dear. <laughs> Winter in Edmonton is annoying. Look for look for British Columbia and then you move there. Huh? Watching from Bahrain. How is Bahrain? Ask on. Yeah, so today we are going to discuss how we can convert our visitor visa to start to work permit because a lot of people are coming to Canada with visitor visa. It's like there is no other pathway available nowadays because the international student one has become very messy. The the cap has been they have put a cap on, on the visas they give for international students. And nowadays, there are not coming so many of them. Actually, almost nil. So what is available now is visitor's visa. And then when you come to Canada, what do you do with that visitor visa? How do you convert it to work permit? Because remember, you cannot work. You cannot work with that visitor visa. You can't. You, you can't work with You have to look for a work permit before you, before they allow you to work. So one of the ways I normally say is that I think now is people are going to use that visitor visa pathway for study. Because now, uh, if they're not going to give us study visas, then we apply for visitor visa. And then when we come here, we look for a school. You can have a school even before you arrive here because finding admission is not a problem. The problem will be getting a study visa. And then now when you come here, as a as a with a visitor visa once you get here then now you 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 apply for you apply for study visa while in canada there of course there's those selection you have to choose they will be asking you where are you then you'll apply you don't apply apply as outside canada because if you click that you're inside canada then it will appear like you're an international uh, um, domestic student so that is one of the ways of converting. And then now when you be, get the study visa, um, once you get the study visa, now you can, you can, you'll get your work permit. Okay. COP, you'll get your COP work permit so that you can work 20 hours a week and then you're studying at the same time. That is one of the ways. The other way of converting visitor visa is filing for asylum. Filing for asylum, you must you must prove. 
you have to have a reason why you're filing for asylum. You have to. Your country has to be a threat and not just a threat. That, that threat, the, that problem cannot be solved in your country. If it's FGM you're filing for, it means your country cannot help you in that. Otherwise, if it's just political, then your country should be able to help you in that. There are so many reasons why you can file for asylum. So many reasons, political, family, domestic, social reasons, all those. And then you give yourself time, the judge will decide whether to grant you or not to grant you. Okay. And then, but by the, when you're waiting, during that time, as you wait to go for your hearing, you'll be having a work permit. That's why I said, is one way you can get work permit. Okay. But it has to be a very genuine reason why you're filing for asylum. The other reason is, of course, coming, looking for LMIA, because there's no direct way of changing visitor visa into Work permit, you that work permit has to have LMI, labor market impact assessment. That's a certificate that is given to Canadian employers to allow them or to the, authorize them to recruit foreigners. And for them to hire you under LMI, they must prove to the government or to the immigration, to IRCC, that they have tried all their best to look for somebody here a domestic person here, a local person here, and they couldn't find. So they have submitted, uh, you know, advertisements severally on Indeed, LinkedIn, and the lawyer has to prove that. <laughs> Guys, I tried doing that with my nurses and it backfired badly. 2022, when I was on fire to bring nurses here, I tried. It didn't work. Proving to them that you didn't find a nurse here and that's why you're bringing a foreigner is not easy. My lawyers, we are still waiting anyway. We are hoping to get, but it's not easy. How many people can I bring with that LMI? <laughs> it's not easy to find that LMI. It's very hard. So if somebody gives you an LMI, make sure you find out if that LMI is fake. Because again, other people from back home, they get fake LMI, they sell. This LMI should be for free. If somebody promises to give you an LMI job, it should be for free. They should not charge you anything. The government does not allow anybody to charge to put a fee. It's illegal to put a fee on that LMIA. So if somebody is selling to you an LMIA, then that's, just know that that person is fake. It's just fake, right? So the other way of um, converting to visitor visa to work permit is finding LMIA exempt jobs. There are some jobs that do not require LMIA, some careers, some classes here of careers. Like if you come here and, and maybe you decide, you find an organization where you can provide charitable or charity services, you can get an, an LMI exempt. If you come here and maybe you want to, um, to do a research, if you are an, a student and you want to come here and do a research as a student or as a scientist, you don't need an LMI while you are in your working field whether paid or not paid. You don't need LMI. The other one is, uh, I think, uh, um, the what? The churches. If you're coming here as a clergy, if you come here as a visitor and then you want to become a clergy, you don't need an LMI for that. If you find a church that can give you a job to work for them as a clergy, as a priest, as a pastor, you don't need an LMI. So these are some of the ways that you can convert your Visitor visa to work permit. Never make a mistake of working without a work permit in Canada. Never take cash jobs, even if they pay you double. Don't get tempted to take those jobs because they are same, same employers will report you to the IRCC. The same people who are hiring you, you think they're very happy to see you escape the, the taxes. I know that happens a lot in the US. But if you try that in Canada, my friend, they will catch up on you. 
and then they will deport you. If if you do those cash jobs and they find you, they will deport you. In the US, you can run away with it. I don't know how they manage, but Canada don't make that. That nobody lied to you. I've seen so many people who have been deported. Don't get greedy to work. Get the right paperwork, get your work permit, and then you can you can work and pay your taxes. But do not try to escape taxes. Okay, so those are some of the ways. <laughs> some of the ways that you can convert your visitor visa to work permit. If you have another way, please text for us. Hmm? Can we get LMA from our home country? Uh, yes, they say yes, but I've never seen. Personally, I've never seen somebody who got. I think I have. I have. It's rare, but I, I think I have. I've seen nurses who, di who did that. Okay. So you can get but rarely. For the nurses, I, I think the one I, 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 I came across, she got um, as a caregiver, as a PSW. Okay. Don't make that mistake. Kemboi. Sijaribu, don't. Run away. Run away. Your fellow Kenyans, watakuza. Watakuza mchana tu hivi kama umeangalia. I've seen it happen. Don't. Don't get tempted. Okay. I'm a dog trainer. Can I get a job in Canada? Yes, you can get, but I don't know how. I don't know how you can get, but I think it's possible. <laughs> Right. Job bank has some LMA job. Yeah, they have, but those LMA jobs are let me tell you a lot of employers what they do. If you because it's a requirement for an employer to advertise that LMA job, if it's me and I want to hire somebody from Kenya, it's a requirement by the government for me to advertise and to prove to the government that I have advertised on Indeed and LinkedIn and Job Bank, whichever places. It's a, it's, it has to be done that by my lawyer to prove to the government. But by the time I'm, I'm submitting that, I already have somebody in mind that I want to recruit. So you, you go and, and search for LMI jobs and start applying. Very few that are genuine. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are holding somebody to give that job. They just do it for, you know, me, I like telling you the truth. The things that happen here on the ground, that's what happens. They would rather remove, they, the best thing for them to do is to remove that LMI. That's how they can help. If they want immigrants genuinely and they want to help, they should just scrap that thing called LMI. It doesn't help. Me, I don't like it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Elijah, watching from Edmonton. How is Edmonton? There's a lot of mining in Edmonton. There's a lot of mining. Hmm? When we first came to Canada, a lot of people used to go to used to move from Toronto to, we used to move from Ontario to Edmonton to go look for jobs in, in the mining. Are those jobs still available? A lot of Kenyans used to go there. Everybody was moving to Edmonton to look for uh, jobs in the mining. I don't know whether they're still there. Okay. Thank you so much, Terry. Okay. And the day they remove that LMA thing, they will help a lot of people. Even Aselam Sika's number will be reduced. And it will be a benefit to them. Because Aselam is very expensive for the government. So if they remove that and people come and find jobs easily, then it, they will cut costs. But you know, even them, they get a lot of funds to 
to fund some of these programs. So they want them. <laughs> they want to anazitaka. Hmm? Can you take NCLEX exam with visitors visa in Canada? Yes, yes, you can. As long as the, let's say, for example, you had registered your NCLEX with your Kenya. For ex, are you from Kenya? Yeah, let's say maybe you're from Kenya. And of course, for you to register for NCLEX, you used a, a certain ID, maybe a national ID or maybe your passport from Kenya. And then now you're in Canada. As long as you're here, your, your visit visa here is valid. It's legal. You are here legally. It hasn't expired. But if it has expired, which ID will you use? So if if the if your visit visa maybe duration has expired and you have now become maybe an asylum seeker, and you had already applied to do your NCLEX in Canada, then whatever ID you get after your visit visa duration expires, then that's the ID that you the, the thing is, which ID are you going to use? Which ID are you going to use? And it can be a challenge. The first time I did NCLEX, I had registered with my, I was not a Canadian citizen then. So, and they required a passport. So I had used my Kenyan passport to register for my NCLEX exam. And that time I was doing an NCLEX exam for US, not even for Canada. I had registered with the US. And when I went to the NCLEX center, there was a problem. They didn't know what to do with my Kenyan passport, even though I was here as a permanent resident, they couldn't take my PR card. I had a PR card. They wouldn't, by the way, what had happened? I don't know why, I, because it took me like 30 to 45 minutes before they allowed me in, in the exam center. They had a problem with my passport. They were saying, you, have, you, are, doing, you are doing your NCLEX in a Canadian center. This NCLEX is for the US and you have a Kenyan passport. So the story was so long. You know, here they, they don't know how to go shortcuts. So it took me around 45 minutes before they allowed me into the exam room. But finally, I, I, they, they said I, I do it. I just went ahead and did. So it's just about ID. Which ID would you use? And is it valid? And those stories, you, those answers you should ask, 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 answer before you, you go in. I have applied more than 100 LMA jobs, no avail. Yeah, that's true. That's what I was saying. Hmm? I got an LMA job from Job Bank and I'm currently working. It took 17 months. Wow, congratulations. Are you a nurse? In which profession? Please tell us more. Don't just give us stories that are hanging on the air. If you want to help, then give us more information. Tell us this is the kind of jobs that I applied. This is what I had to do so that somebody else can try. But if you just say I applied, somebody may not know where to start. Okay. Can Please ask this question there. Can someone pay for him or herself tickets and get a job? The job has to have LMA, that's what we are saying. How much cash you need for visiting and for how long? Depends with you can't you can't tell somebody how much money they need to visit because everybody has got their own budget. If you are a person who wants to come and stay in a five star, a five star hotel here is around $250 per night, double bed. That's the kind of Marriott host hotel. That's how much I pay every time I go to those five-star hotels. $250, $280 per night. So if you want to budget with that, then it's up to you. But of course, there are cheaper ones, even for $30 a night. So I, that's why I can't even tell you. Even the tickets, some people will use econo economy class, others will use first class, business class. So depends on your class. Okay. Any information that I share here is not legal advice. It's just my opinion. So you still owe your own opinion. You still hold your own opinion.
Canadim. I, I normally, Vin, I normally see them on Google, but I don't know how valid they are. They've been there for many years, that website. But I, I don't know. I can't vet. I don't know. Can't vet them. I don't know. Um, red sealed exam. What is red sealed exam? I don't know that. Can I apply for Canada visa without going back to my home country? I'm in Europe. Yes, you don't need to go to your home country. You don't need to go to your home country. You can just apply it from Europe. Even for US, I have a guy who was in Germany and last week he went for US visa, uh, um, what is it called, interview. And he got the visa for the US and he was in there, he was in Germany. So it's possible, you can. Actually, what I also learned is that if you're in the, let's say for example, you had applied Canadian and US visa, and then you got the US visa, and then you are in the US, and then while in the US, they, they ask you to take your passport, they have given you the Canadian visa. You don't have to go back to your home country from the US. You just need to send it to the nearest Canadian embassy in the US, and then they stamp, the Canadian visa, and then you cross. If you want to cross to Canada, if you want to remain in the US, it's up to you. As a visitor, initially, I think I would go for Canada because Canada is easier to process your papers compared to the US, according to me. But some people prefer the US because of the good weather and the dollar is strong. <laughs> but getting papers there, especially if you have a family back home, it will never be easy to bring them to the US. It will be so hard compared to Canada. Okay. An agent for what, Jane? An agency. Personally, I don't have an agency. I've never done any visa for anybody. I've never. And I'll not do. I, I wouldn't want to do, by the way. I wouldn't want to do people's visa because, you know, applying for somebody visa is a 50-50 thing. And I don't want to keep, to hold grudges with people. I don't know. I don't want. I've never wanted to do visas. Even if I, sometimes I had thought of doing the immigration consultant consultancy program here which I qualified to do but then I was like what do I want to keep fighting with people every day it's a very bad job for me I wouldn't want because I, the thing is I can't guarantee you that once I do your visa I will be able to get it and you have paid me so you will be saying that Joyce ate my money and she didn't give me a visa so once I learned that I said no let me not get involved. But if you want me to guide you, if you want me to lead you to another agent who can help you, 50-50, you can get, you cannot get. It's 50. Nobody should ever guarantee you of a visa. Nobody. If you want me to guide, to tell you like this person will, will help you to do it, but they cannot guarantee you at the same time, I'll do that. Send me an email on joycecanada3 at gmail.com. But personally, I don't do visas. And I don't have an agency anywhere. Uh, Red seal exams are for trades. Oh, it allows you to work all over Canada provinces without applying license per province. Oh, they do red seal exam. I didn't know. I didn't know. Maybe I research and I come back with a video. I applied for cabinet making jobs, carpentry. Wow. LMI job. He got an LMI job for carpentry, guys. So if you have done carpentry, you can apply for that. He should tell us the company that hired him. <laughs> and then all the people here on this on this live will apply. He should tell us the company if he's <laughs> if he wants to help. If you want to help, give us the company name. Hmm? <laughs> Yeah. Must you have an invitation letter to visit Canada? Not really. You don't have to. 
You don't need you, it's not a, it's of course it increases your chance i'll tell you why i think it increases the chances of you getting is because um it's because like now the challenge that has been there you remember the story of the woman who who died at the shelter outside the shelter because of a hypothermia i believe uh if she had if she had an invitation then that that death would not have occurred because she would once she come here and she has an invitation the person who invited her would have hosted her so i think um i think the embassy now would if they have somebody with an invitation and another person without an invitation they would of course give somebody with an invitation that visa because this person has got very low chances of becoming homeless and there is no country that wants its visitors to become homeless uh, there is no country that would want that to happen so they, they would consider somebody with an invitation that's a stronger application it's a stronger compared to another one that like folk is coming with itinerary okay <laughs> Did you call me apostle? Seriously, Matanda, Mutanda, Ivan. Do you know the meaning of apostle? I can't even wear that shoe, my friend. Apostle Paul. Do you see the you know the miracles Apostle Paul did in the Bible? Me, I've never done any miracle, and then you are calling me apostle. Apostle is a very big name for me. I I'm not even quarter away. <laughs> no. I refuse that name. Me, I'm not an apostle. Call me Joyce. Hey, apostle is a big name. Hey. If today God calls me apostle when I'm when I'm in bed, hey, I'll wake up and ask him, God, are you serious? <laughs> That's a very big name. <laughs> anyway, I'm not an apostle, my dear. Uh-huh. This is a very good question because I, I did this last week. Uh, how much is a studio apartment in an average area? Good. Let me give you a story. Last, last, last month. When is today? 11th. Yeah, I think it was last month. Beginning of this month. I was helping somebody to, to look for a, a space where I live in Ontario. Guess what, guys? Housing has become so expensive. Housing gosh i was like huh do people really know how canada housing has become very expensive guess what a shared room what people are doing they take like a whole like okay let's say i have a house that has four bedrooms so those four bedrooms i i rent them out and then people will share the kitchen and the and the washroom the bathroom and the kitchen and the sitting room Okay. Then the rooms I rent them. Then guess how much? 800 to 1,000 Canadian dollar. 800 to 1,000 Canadian. One room. And these are students, guys. Students are rich. I was like, how do they even afford to pay this? And they're students. Even that guy I was trying to get a space was a student. I said, wow, this is a business I can do. I think I'll start doing that business. But me, I'll just have mercy on them and I'll tell them, ah, yeah, yeah, you guys just, just pay my mortgage and it's very expensive. Housing has become very, very... So if one room is 1,000, how about two-bedroom house on its own or three-bedroom? So if you want a whole house, just give yourself 3,500. 3, a detached home, 3,500 with three-bedroom or four bedroom 3500 and paying that money how much are you even making to be able to pay that i would rather pay for mortgage instead of paying that rent yeah. okay um best airline to use when coming to canada please madam joyce comment best airlines according to me my opinion <laughs> I think it it will always be Ethiopian Airlines. 
But nowadays, because everybody is using Ethiopian Airlines, when I go to Kenya and I'm coming back, I avoid because I don't, I don't want to meet with a lot of people coming to Canada. <sighs> so mine has always been Ethiopian. But lately, I think I have moved to KLM. KLM is not good. I didn't like it. Last time I went through France, uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Those people are so hostile. They are so, I mean, even they don't, I don't know, maybe it's because of language barrier, but hey, they, they are not kind. They are not kind. France, French people, <laughs> I didn't find them kind. So even in the airlines inside, the, the, the attendants, they were not kind. You can't compare them with Ethiopian. You know, Ethiopian, you feel homely. Maybe because I'm an African and Ethiopia is Africa. And so I'm attended by a, an African and it feels good. I'm not a racist, but let me tell you, I, I, don't, I, I always feel a difference when I change. Yeah, so uh, because of challenges of, uh, especially when you're coming as a visitor, because of challenges of using Europe, and some of them want you to have a visa to transit. Maybe the best one would always be Ethiopian. Okay, you go for Ethiopia. It's, it's, a, it's a very good uh, airline. Okay. Um, Kenyans have been returned after reaching Ethiopia. This thing of being returned is not about Ethiopian Airlines because even with KLM, they have been returned. The thing, I don't know. I don't know what's the problem. <laughs> this thing, I did that video and I, I, I still don't know why people are being returned. I don't know. Can somebody please inbox? Yeah, you can inbox me on Telegram, but make sure you it's, it's me. Make sure The first thing you do is to send me an email. Joyce Canada 3. JoyceCanada3 at gmail.com. JoyceCanada3. Oh, we're back. Oh, Yeah. Um, on a pizza and a, a soda. Oh, oh, my God. Up or downstairs? Huh? Downstairs. Oh, yeah. This is a perfect day. Huh? This is a perfect day. Go shower first. <laughs> I'm live. <laughs> yeah, close. Um, I paid eight seventy five living in BC and shared condo. Yeah, BC. That's BC. I, I was talking of Ontario. Ontario is that to one thousand is a lot. Wow, you're in Canada. Wow, congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome to Canada. How is Canada? What's your experience? What did you expect? What's, what did you find? Hmm? When you come to Canada during winter, it's not beautiful. You wouldn't like it. And it's cold. But when you come from any time from now, now it's going to be very beautiful. It's going to be very green and nice looking and good weather. Anytime from today, 15th of March onwards, all the way to November. No, all the way to October. From now, all the way to October. Canada is very beautiful. You like it. But after that, it's all white snow. Okay. Uh, my friend, myself, and myself, I used Lufthansa airline and I recommend otherwise in, it's on another level. Yeah, Lufthansa is not bad. I think I also tried it sometimes. It's not bad. Depending on where it's going through. She said she, she give it 10 over 10. <laughs> use Luf, Lufthansa. Yeah, a lot of people say Lufthansa is good. But to me, between Lufthansa and Ethiopian, I would go for Ethiopian. KLM, they, people say, Canadians say that, can, Kenyans, Canadians, they say that KLM is for class, like it's for class. But me, I didn't find that class. 
I still felt like I don't belong. Yeah, I don't like going places where I don't feel feel like I don't belong. Like I, I, where I'm treated differently. I don't like. I don't like. Maybe that's why I'm. More, <laughs> I'm always saying I'll go back home. I'll go back home to Kenya to retire there. Why are people? Why are people look like me? Why are people treat me like them? Yeah. <laughs> And why are you in Canada? Somebody write that. That's the next question. And what are you doing there? There because I'm, I've, I told you, if you see somebody who has immigrated, just know those, those people have not made it yet. <laughs> if you see somebody who is struggling with immigration, just know that person has not yet made it. So we are trying our best to make it. <laughs> and then we go back home. All right. Okay, my husband has three years visitor visa. Please, how uh, this one I discussed. You have to listen to, to this video again because I explained in the beginning of this video when I was starting the video. I explained nicely, nicely, nicely. Today, I want to sleep early. Because tomorrow I'm going to Brampton. Tomorrow. I'll drive all the way to Brampton. So I want to sleep early. And I'll do for you videos when I go to Brampton. If you're in Brampton, please invite me for lunch. Those of you in Brampton, invite me for lunch. Wow. Drop those questions. I can't see more questions. <laughs> Joyce is warm today. Can I talk with you? Yeah, you can talk to me on send me an email. Send me an email and then Come all the way and talk and inbox me. The first step is to send me an email. Any room for lab technologists? No, you can't find lab technologists. You'll wait for the next 20 years. So just apply for visitor visa. Let's apply for visitor visa. Okay. I think a lot of you are sleeping. You and me, I feel sleepy, but I have to go live on my other channel. Nowadays, I'm not going to neglect my channels. I'll be after this live, I'll still go live on Joyce K content creator I have to go live there too yeah joy samuel apply for apply for visitor visa if you are a caregiver there are opportunities in um uh, in where? In Europe, Poland, Finland, and you can go there and work as a caregiver. Even nurses, and it's a permanent resident pathway, even nurses. I said I'm not going to do that video until I help all my relatives. <laughs> but now I've said it. As a pathway for Europe, I'm helping a lot of relatives. Once I finish the whole clan, and the whole village where I come from, then I'll do a video. I have to start from home. <laughs> I have to start from home. Home, home, home. I'm already in it. I think I have like 10 people in the process for permanent resident with the whole family, guys. Ha. <laughs> 
As those ones get there, then I'll come and I do a video. I say, I give you step by step. Because I want to help my people too. Hey, you know, guys, let me tell you, the only way you can help your people is to help them immigrate. In this economy, the only way to help your home and your village and your relatives is to show them how to immigrate. Because when they immigrate and they come here, and there's something back home that needs to be needed financially, I'll call all of them and I'll tell them we are contributing, all of us. Hmm? All of us are contributing. My subscribers are family. They are family, but they are not blood. There is blood. Even you at your workplace. If if your boss tells you, go go get me 10 people. Will you come here and do a video for 10 people? You just, first of all, get your brother, your sister, your niece, your nephew. Speak the truth and don't lie to us. Don't say, oh, Joyce is refusing. But I gave you a hint. I said research for Finland and Poland. Those two, Finland and Poland. Don't say at your oh, Joyce is refusing with opportunities. <laughs> I, I'll come and tell you. But in the meantime, such Poland and uh, I believe some people have done those videos, Poland and Finland. They have opportunities for caregivers, nurses, welders, IT and his permanent resident pathways. Okay. Um, I'm an international registered nurse with NCLEX, Nova Scotia license. I applied to Nova Scotia Health Authority, but they said they're considering those in Canada first. I they stopped. What happened? <laughs> maybe the maybe the IRCC told them first of all to give to Canadians. Hmm? Maybe. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. For the nurses, especially for Nova Scotia, I don't know what to say. It's not straightforward. It's not like the US. You know, for the US as a nurse, it's, it's just that nowadays there's retrogression. Otherwise, before it was straightforward, before it was so easy to find. So make sure you subscribe on this channel so that when I come back with content for, for Finland, for, no, those ones I'll do them on, um, I'll do them on content creator, Joyce content creator channel. That's where I mix. This one, I don't like mixing. This one is for Canada alone. See how much we have grown, 178,000 subscribers. If you have not subscribed, you are the ones who is making us not to go to 200,000. Please subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. If you subscribe, make sure you tell me so that I, I hug you. Oh, this is Afrogenic. Long time. Why did you change your name? Wow. It's been long. That's why I haven't been seeing you on YouTube. Nice to see you. Hi, Joyce. Thank you so much. I followed your videos and applied for visitor visa. I got it. Thanks once again. I did myself. I got five years. Now I'm in Canada, Vancouver. It's a beautiful place. Wow. Prudence Jane. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. I feel so nice when I see somebody has gotten a visa. I feel so nice. Thank you so much. 
So guys, I'm going live on Joyce Content Creator. All these are my channels and I have to feed them. I have to be there. Maybe when I go there, I will talk about Finland. Let's meet there, guys. Yeah, let's meet there. Oh, you are from Kenya. Wow. Nice. That's nice. Okay, I'll be going live on my other channel and then study abroad. It's one hour here. Thank you, guys. See you next.